Welcome to Dynamite Delight, a show that actually did it well. I don't know if I'm going to use that title. I don't know if I'm going to use doing it well or not, but this was done well. There were certain things that weren't great, but the show overall was done quite well. Opening the show, we got the Battle Royal for the tag division. Now, I'm not going to lie, the thing that I enjoyed the most was unlike the WWE that said that if one gets thrown out, both are done. Here, one gets thrown out does not mean the team is gone. That means one team, even if one person's out, is still in it. I'm fine with that. But seeing that the Young Bucks is there, I had this feeling. If it wasn't Pride and Power, Santana Ortiz, which I think they should have done it, Knowing full well what's going on with Hangman Page and Kenny Omega with the Bucks, I had a feeling that the Bucks were going to possibly be the last two there or they were going to win it. And guess what? They won it. This wasn't a surprise to me. I was either thinking Pride and Power was going to win because of what happened with Santana. Santana has done a great work talking. I've said this back in Impact Wrestling that these guys need to talk and when they are allowed to talk, they got something. Now seeing Santana that he can talk, I hope they don't just throw that under the rug. Especially after this. So, this is just me, you guys. Tell me below. Oh, almost forgot. I'll say it before. I'll keep saying it before. And I'll say it again. Luchasaurus is money. They better do something with him soon. Or I'm going to get angry and start rioting. Now, next. You have the, one of the first on AEW. You got Goku versus E.T. <laughs> there in my face. Oh my gosh. You got Shannon. Who just came back. Who's dressed as Goku. And then you got the Statlander. The alien from Andromeda. Who loves to boop you on the nose. And you got both these girls in the ring. You got E.T. the extra testicle. Now, if you don't know where that comes from, look up Cheech and Chong. And look for one of their movies talking about E.T., the extra testicle. That mess was funny. It's an old movie. It's a rated R movie. But it's still a freaking great movie if you want to see something dirty and freaking funny. But now you have Statlander versus Shayna. And the one major flaw of it was Britt Baker. I'm sorry guys, look, I don't hate Britt, but as I said in the last review, Britt Baker needs to be what she truly is. She is a wrestler who is a dentist. Say dentist stuff. Say like, while the match is going on, oh, I can see why Statland is losing. I bet one of her molars is loose. Oh, she's moving real slow. You know that when the canines are not lined up properly, you can see that it can mess with your brain. Something that brings in dentistry. Yes, you don't have to say it's true. It, it, no one says that kind of stuff is true. You don't have to say that when you get fillings in, like you did back in the early 20s, 30s, and the 1940s, which had lead in them. Yes, there was lead in fillings back then. Luckily for me, I got metal in my mouth, but it's not the one that could be dangerous. No, not lead, but um, like um, some had lead, some had mercury, some had some mix in it. But she could say some stuff in dentist work, in dentist words, just to get her character over. She just knocked out a woman's tooth in her story, in her character. Why couldn't she continue doing that? In the end, Statlander wins. 
but it really doesn't mean much for Britt Baker being on commentary because she felt like she did before, cringy and boring. She needs to be a dentist saying dentist stuff. Now, the interview with Naya Rose. Finally, look guys, I know there's some who love Rio. Riho, sorry. I'm telling you right now, Riho was a big, big mistake. Not because she had bad in-ring ability. Not because she wasn't over with the fans or cute. Girl's 22 years old. Cute as hell. I marry her. Yeah, I'm an old ass man saying, well, I'll be with a 22 year old girl. Not saying that. She's a woman. She's over 20. It don't matter. But the problem here is this. Even if I was in love with her and I wanted to marry her in real life, her character sucked. She had no character development, no talking, no interviews on Dynamite, nothing. That is what killed her. She did nothing on Dynamite. She did no interviews on Dynamite with a translator. She did no promos in Dynamite. She did nothing on Dynamite. And that's what destroyed her and messed up the women's division 100%. It did. Look at Nia Rose. Nia Rose has been in the business maybe about near seven years. She's not great. She's still working on it. She's not a bad looking woman. She got a pair of boobs you can suck on. I'm just being honest here, guys. Any guy or girl would just see what's in front of you. Got a woman who's got a who's thick with boobs. There you go. And she could talk. Not because she's the greatest talker in the world, because she was allowed to talk. You bring out Nia Rose with Tony Giovanni. She talks. She wasn't great at it. She needs some work. A little bit more work. To go with her character. Because she started sounding really swill when she started. Sh sh shill. Not swill. Shill. When she started screaming to get over with the crowd saying. You guys are nothing. You ain't nothing. I'm angry at all of y'all for not being in my corner. I should have won. This is what she said. I should have won. And because I didn't won. I got hungry. And when I get hungry. I break bitches. That sounded good. It wasn't perfect, but because finally somebody in the back had the brain power. I don't care if this is even Kenny. Realize we need to put this woman in front of the crowd in an interview because the women's division is shit. They finally did that. And best of all, you bring out Statlander. You bring out Big Swole to let the queen know. And I wish she hadn't been called the queen. Not because she can't be a queen. I just feel like you're biting off of Charlotte Flair. And the problem here is this, guys. It's not the fact that Nia Rose can remind you of Charlotte because she's gotten over because of her name. No, this is not it. It's because, in this respect, because how bad the women have been booked, kind of like WWE, Nia Rose saying that does not help the case. She needed to destroy more women after winning a couple of matches. Then she can call herself a queen. Having Big Swole come out with Statlander helped it. For me personally, made this. I'm being honest here. This was the best women's segment I've seen since AEW aired. And it's not because I want to screw a Big Swole or Statlander. Or a Nia Rose. It's not because I want to screw any one of them. Who wouldn't want to screw any one of them? They're women. They got body parts you want to screw. It's because they finally put them in front of everybody. And gave the one who has a title. A character. She is a destructive bitch. That will do whatever it takes to win. She's not a cheater. She doesn't have to be. She just wiped your ass out because she's an actual badass heel. And then you got two other women. Another badass heel who really, when it comes to Big Swole with Nia Rose, I don't want to see them again because they don't seem to have good chemistry. And then you got Statlander. I don't know if she's got chemistry with Nia Rose, but she might. Just on the face of it, it looked good. 
Does mean it was great. But this is just me. You guys tell me below. Now, you got Moxley versus a Jeff Cobb. Mm. Seeing the champion Y2J. I know I shouldn't be saying Y2J. No one's telling me not to, but I am the type that says if he was brought in in the millennial time, he should still be allowed to say no matter if he's in WWE or not. The man came in at the turn of the century. He means something. But the champion comes out to watch the match. Was this a good match? It was a damn good match. It was. This was the second best match of the night. Because of his technical work. And because... And I, I'm not taking anything from Statlander and Shayna. Shannon, sorry, Shanna. Because that was technical as well. It wasn't that bad. This one was pretty... Pretty heavy impact. These guys were very dead even. And in the end, with a roll-up, you get Moxie winning. Getting his ass beaten up. You get Dustin come out. Which was okay. But now that Derby Allen has come back, which made the best sense to bring back Derby Allen, who is freaking angry because he got his lands crushed or damaged or whatever you want to call it, he wipes out almost everybody. I'm fine with it. Now, my guess has to be next week you're going to have a six man tag. Let's be honest here. There's going to be a six man tag, I'm sure of it. Derby Allen is going to probably work with Moxley and Dustin, and you're going to have probably the champion with Hager and Sammy Guevara. That's what I think is going to happen. Do I want to see that? No. But I do believe it will be done. Hopefully, it will book it properly. Uh, this is good. Not because it's the best match of the night. The Steel Cage is the best match of the night. This is third best because of its storytelling. Lucha Bro versus Kenny and Paige. Not taking anything away from the match. It was a damn good match. But this was not about the match. This wasn't. This is about seeing if Kenny and Paige maintain their titles. Versus the Lucha Bros. And go up against the Bucks. Because that's what this entire story is about. Booking a story of Kenny and Paige dealing with the Bucks. The Elite versus the Elite. And where everyone's going to think the Elite's going to be happy. Because they're just going to exchange the title between all four of them. Who's going to care? Because as long as the Elite keeps the titles, who gives a damn? But in this situation, because Hangman Page is being a rebel with a drunken cause... Because you can see him drunken, drinking, and I'll explain that in a minute. I, I botched that because I'll say this, I enjoyed it, but I feel that there might be something missing due to the fact of, I know what it is, Pac dealing with Kenny Omega while Hangman Page is dealing with the Bucks. This is the thing that bots, this thing bothers me because you got Kenny Omega still dealing with Pac. And now you're going into revolution. You're going to revolution with Kenny and Paige dealing with the Bucks. And you can see Kenny does not want nothing to do with the Bucks. Excuse, <laughs> excuse me. He doesn't want anything to do with the Bucks. When the match was over and the Bucks came out, you got Hangman and Paige trying to pull Kenny away from the Bucks. Paige doesn't want anything to do with the elite. He wants his partner to understand that. But Kenny is torn between being loyal to the elite and now being loyal to his partner that is actually a friend. Even though he's not part of the elite, he's still a friend and you got him caring about the elite and his other friends that he cares about. He's torn. So seeing this is what the story should be. You should not have Pac. I hate saying Pac when it should be Pac. Pac being involved with Kenny next week in an Iron Man match. Getting as many falls as you can within 30 minutes. It should not be there. This should not be there. And I'm sure people are going to say, dude, don't worry about it. It adds to the story. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Because if Pac wins that match, 
What does Pac get? Does he get a chance at the world title? No, he doesn't. Does he get a chance at the tag titles? No, he doesn't. Is there another title for him to go to? No, there isn't. Is the ring that's on MJF finger up for grabs? No, it's not. So even if Pac wins the damn match, it gives him nothing. So they didn't even need to do this unless there was a title involved. And there isn't one. So I really believe this was a, 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 it's a big waste of time next week when it comes to Pac and Kenny Omega. It does not add to the story. It doesn't. It doesn't add to the story. Even when the Bucks are going to come out along with Paige and there's going to be some type of conflict. And I know there will be. There's going to be something. Does not mean it was better. Finally, if I'm forgetting something, I'm sorry. Steel Cage. The vid pack before the Steel Cage match was good. It does put over Wardlow a little bit. Going to the ring. Going to the match. This was the best match of the night because of what it means going into Revolution. That if Cody wins this, he finally gets his hands on MJF, period. And then a part of the match, you actually see... Can, you see the blood. It's in my face. You see the match. It wasn't the most greatest steel cage match. But I'm going to say this. Just like when it came to the Battle Royal, instead of doing a stupid WWE thing where just one of the partners fall out of the ring and that is it for the team, you actually have a stipulation here. Well, not stipulation. You actually have rules here. There's no DQ. There's no count out. There's no time limit. And you can't escape the cage. WWE has killed that concept of the steel cage, having one of those people having to get out of the cage so they can win by jumping out of the ring. That's not here. The only way to win is by pinfall submission, which really made the match way better for me personally. In the end, seeing that moonsault from a Cody help the match. In the end, Cody does win. And now you're going into revolution in 11 days, I believe, where we're wondering how is Cody going to get his hands on MJF knowing Warlow is still in that situation? And let's be honest here, guys. Warlow is a beast. He was put over well by Cody, showing that practically there's nothing that can stop him. He can throw anybody anywhere. He threw around Cody like he was a damn rag doll and a five-year-old child. That is the damn truth. He threw his ass around. He did an F5 and a half. I'm calling it F7. <laughs> That's a tornado. An F7. He threw him around, did a full rotation and a half, and he hit the floor. That is an F7. That's what he should call it. I don't know what to call it, but just call it an F7. Warlow looks like a beast, and he's going to probably be at ringside. So everyone think about it. how is Cody going to win. How is Cody going to be able to get to Revolution? How is MJF going to screw over Cody in this pay-per-view? This was good to show. A good build. Good first. A good steel cage match. A good battle royal with a, a rule that only one person can go out of the ring and both are not done. You finally did something right and... Uh, I'm about to say NWA... AEW did Nia Rose right. They did. This was a good show. Easily good. No problems. You can watch this show. And I believe you'll like it. But it's just me. You guys tell me below. Have a good day. Have a good night. And I will be watching Sacrifice. And I'll do a review of it. But as you guys know, there is no NWA. There's Squared Circle. I will watch it, but I'm not reviewing it. I want to just soak it up and get a good understanding of the concept. That's just me, you guys. I hope you understand.